Don't be lazy and guess. Instead, you gotta think about the right direction. Coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Hebert, joined as always by Dr. Hubadi. Dr. Hubadi, they don't know this, um, but I, maybe they guess that, you know, that we, we film three a week. And that yes. puts us ahead of our two two releases a week. So we've had uh, a few stored up. So it's actually been several weeks since we've filmed because of summer and life and schedules and holidays and all of that. So yes. uh, in terms of release, they won't know that there's a break. But Dr. Wade, I haven't seen you in almost a month. It's good to see you, my friend. <laughs> it's good to see you, I am, too. I am glad to be back at filming. And we yes. are picking back up today on Napoleon Hill's 30 Causes of Failures. We're going to talk about number 29 today. And that is this idea that, that he mentions, uh, the, the lazy thinker, right? Or really, maybe we could even go one step farther, the people that don't think, Yes. right? Yes, sometimes you, you get a gut reaction, you get a gut feeling, and you need to go with it, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly in the coaching realm, we deal with that. But really mm -hmm. what he's talking about here is there are just people who are too lazy to do the, the research, to, oh, yeah. to gather the information, that they say, well, the information's probably out there, but I don't want to put in that much work. Mm -hmm. And that, he says, is what leads people to failure. Yes, and that's why you end up guessing. Yes. Uh, you know, we've all met that person who sees a book you read and said, oh, I already know what that book is about. That's how you know. Because <laughs> they, yeah. they read the title. They read the title and they think they know. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that person, yeah. And it's, I mean, it, it's one of those things that I, I'm thankful. I, we've shared mm -hmm. as we've gone through this that, that my areas of struggle, you can go back and watch mm -hmm. those videos. I've admitted, you know, the ones that I struggle with. Dr. Brady, I love learning. Yes. Like I, I've told my wife before, mm -hmm. if I could be like a perpetual student, mm -hmm. I would go get a degree and graduate and mm -hmm. then come back the next fall and get another degree. Mm -hmm. Like the, the more, and, and here's why, mm -hmm. and this maybe gets back, you know, to being that business owner, the more I know, yes, the more I can help people. Oh yeah, definitely. And the more people that I can help, the more impact that I can have. Mm -hmm. Right. And one of my ambitious goals, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever told you this, one of my ambitious goals mm -hmm. in my life is I want to leave the world a better place than I found it. Oh yeah. And if I'm going to do that, well, first of all, there's a lot of work to do, but it means I got to know stuff to be able to help people, right? right? And so acquiring knowledge to me is just a, it's a life uh, principle. It's a cornerstone uh, upon which I base my life. But acquiring knowledge really is helpful in lots of different areas of life. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's why we complement each other very well. And that's why when I first met you, I said, that guy has a fund of knowledge. And then when you tell me how many books you read per year, still haven't caught it with the mouth you read, but I still do pretty good. <laughs> Especially with the schedule that but, I have. But you've increased it, right? Yeah, and, I've definitely And that's really the point. It. It's not that yeah. I set, it's yeah. not that I'm the standard bearer. It's that you realize there's yeah, value and information there. <laughs> well, thank you. But it's that you realize that the more the more that we learn, right. the, the more that we can help people, right? Yeah. The more we learn, the more we definitely earn. <laughs> but, Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I love gathering knowledge because my focus is helping people too. Yeah. And so so that's why it's so wonderful. That's why we even do this channel. So, yeah. And, and it's one of those, I mean, I, I read, but... In, in your defense, you go to far more conferences than I do, right? So yeah. we, we have our we have our preferred methods of learning. I think that's ultimately what, mm -hmm. what Hill is getting at here. Mm -hmm. What causes us to fail, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what he's stating in his book is that we fail when we when we don't even try to seek out that information. Oh, yeah. And in some sense, in that regard, it's probably this is probably one of the harder videos mm -hmm. for me to make because it's just something I don't relate to. Like <laughs> yeah. I want to wake up and be mm -hmm. in that learning mindset, right? Oh, there yeah. is something out there today mm -hmm. that I can learn that will help mm -hmm. me that will help my family, that will help people I care about, that will help my business, that will help a customer. Like, if I don't show up and fully engage in that process, I'm going to leave something on the table that I don't want to. Yes, and I have patients who come to me who are dealing with infertility. Even though I'm not an infertility specialist, I'm constantly learning on it. In fact, the next conference that you brought up, I go to conference all the time, is on the infertility um, certification, and it's gonna be in Los Angeles in September. And um, so I'm looking forward to it because because it's nothing better than when you help someone to get pregnant and they having that child for yeah. the first time when they're over 30s, their husband's struggling, she's struggling, and they go to specialists that aren't really helping them. And when you can add to them, add to it that functional medicine approach, right. man, it's the thing of beauty. So I can never feel like I know it all. I mean, I'm looking at some of the lectures and say, well, I know something about that, something about that. But man, there's so much to know all the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a there's a wealth of knowledge <clears throat> out there that I I've I've relayed this to my oldest daughter who feels very similar to the way I do. Mm -hmm. I said when I when I finish a book, mm -hmm. 
there's almost like I almost get a sense of of I almost get a panic attack mm-hmm. because I look at the list of books mm-hmm. that I want to read and I oh, get yeah. this panic attack thinking about but which one will I start next? Yeah, like I, no. I finished one, but my list is thirty strong. Yes, and I can't read all thirty, so I got to pick one. I'm like, but what if I picked the wrong one? Or what if this one isn't <laughs> as good as the last one? Like I, right. I work myself up right. into there's mm-hmm. so much out there I want to know. So let, let's shift that then and say what are some of the benefits that we've seen? I don't think anybody is going to be watching this channel mm-hmm. and saying. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to learn. People are tuning into this because they like to learn. So let's talk about then either mm-hmm. some of those, Dr. Reed, what are, what are your, some of your favorite methods of learning or what are some of those mm-hmm. things that as you've learned have helped you personally or professionally continue to grow? Well, one method I, I use to learn, I love to read, but I also, I'm a, um, I can learn not just visually, but auditory. Yeah. You know, I can go to lectures and get a lot out of it. So I know some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners. But I can actually do both. Yeah. And I do like when people give, you know, show uh, examples of things and, and have like different props and displays. That helps too. But, but one of the things I like to learn about things I'm interested in. Um, and so I seek those things out. And just, you know, addressing your issue about how many books you have to read. I have two areas of books because I got tired of looking at the one area that had so many books I still had to read. Yeah. And the biggest problem I have is that once I read Run, if I share it with somebody, they say, oh, you should read this book and that book. And so I get a lot of that going <laughs> that's on. That's right. And But but that's one way is reading, uh, going to conferences. But also I learn a lot from my patients. When they come in and they have issues and they say, Doc, are you aware of this? And if I'm not, I'll go ahead and do some research. I'll go online and look things up. But those are the way. But – the, the last way I learned is through experience, yeah. doing it over and yeah. over and over, and you're learning how to troubleshoot. Case in point, I had a patient come in yesterday. He wanted to do PRP for his carpal tunnel. We had tried steroids. It was kind of iffy results, but we did PRP uh, this you know the other day. And so he said, Doc, what's taking so long? I found his median nerve very quickly uh, the first time. He said, you did it like within, within minutes. Yesterday, I struggled. I, I found it quicker on the right, his left uh, wrist. It took a little while on the right. But then I remembered that, hey, the nerve, I don't have to do a transactional view. Transactional means going straight down. I can do it longitudinal. So when I turn the, the ultrasound longitudinal, the nerve is right there. And I, I knew that you could do it the way years ago, but I never did it that way. Yeah. And so once again, that's what, so I said in the future, I'm just going to go that way first see where the nerve is longitudinally, then I can find it cross-sectionally. But well, that's what I'm saying. Experience also teach you how to do things faster. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it that, that reminds me, there was the, um, uh, there's that story of like the the new business banker, mm-hmm. right? And he's he's new in the organization and he's meeting with one of the, the seasoned vets who's made millions of dollars and is high up in the organization. And he goes, you know, sir, I really admire you mm-hmm. and I want to model my career after you. What, what mm-hmm. are some of the things that, that you've done that have helped make you so successful? And the, the older established banker goes, well, you just got to make really good decisions. Mm-hmm. And the young guy goes, well, that's great. How do I make good decisions? And the old banker goes, by making lots of bad ones. Yes. Right? It's that, it's that experience piece of yes. there, are, there are things that I found out myself as a business owner that I would never have found out about mm-hmm. myself otherwise. Yeah. Right? And that's one of those things I, I tell my kids. You're going to own a business someday. It doesn't have to be full-time. You don't have to do it th- your whole life. But for at least six months on a part-time mm-hmm. basis – you are going to be a business owner because right. you will find out things about yourself mm-hmm. that you would never have figured out otherwise. And there is benefit to that experiential mm-hmm. learning and yes. being thrown into the deep end, being thrown into the fire and saying, what am I made of and how am I going to do this? Mm-hmm. And so whether it's, whether it's reading, whether it's listening, whether it's, mm-hmm. it's podcasting or attending lectures, watching videos, yes. listening to people, I, Dr. Bader, I don't think there's mm-hmm. a better teacher out there than actually getting out there and doing it yourself. Hands on. And in fact, when I hire new employees, when they first come in, they feel overwhelmed by all the different things that they're required to do here. Yeah. And I tell them, I said, look, I didn't hire you for experience. I said, I cannot buy, I mean, I cannot teach experience. I can buy it. I said, I hired you so that you can come here and learn how to do it the way I need you to do yep. it. And yep. then when they grasp it, in fact, uh, Josie the other day was saying, she said, Doc, I learned so much here. She said, because we have really learned how to do so many things. We really know how to assist you. I said, yes. yes. That's, that's why I put a lot of effort on the front end because it pays dividends on the back that's end. Right. You know, it really does. Well, you know, it, and we tell people on, on the HR side with that all the time that if you, if you teach your employees something before they need it, yes. that's training. 
Yes. If you teach them that after they needed it, it's discipline. Yes. And every employee would rather be trained than discipline. Yes. Right? So give them That's the information true. up front. But, Dr. Brady, you raise a good point. Uh, uh, let's give a teaser for next week. You mm-hmm. mentioned <clears throat> that you train your office staff. Dr. Brady, you have a new office staff member. Mm-hmm. Yes. And since everybody else has been on camera, next week <laughs> we're going to have a new uh, office staff member joining us for yes. filming on one of our videos next week. Yes. yes? Yeah. Miley. Miley. Excellent. Well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Remember to to not just uh, go on that gut feeling. There are times that it may be appropriate, but to actually lean into that learning process, acquire that knowledge so that you can help more people. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Ebert. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on a future video. I was speaking to a group of professional coaches recently about a online educational platform that I had built and was, and was instructing them how to use it. And they said, this is great information, but it's too much. What's one question we could ask to help us ingrain the information? And here was the question I posed to them that is posing to you that is relevant to this. What does good growth for me look like? Sometimes we think that all growth is good, but the reality is it isn't. As Dr. Beatty would attest, cancer is a growth in the body. So not all growth is good. But as a business owner, as a person, to sit down and say, what does good growth look like helps you focus that learning so that you can be most impactful and help the most amount of people.